people scoffing at the idea that Christ is coming again. You certainly don't believe that. They don't want to be disturbed in all the good times they're having and all the materialism and everything they're getting here. They don't want to miss all those good TV programs and all the rest of it. So they scoff at the idea that Christ is coming and the world's going to be judged. And they say, where is the promise of his coming? Why, he's been promising to come for 2,000 years and he hasn't come. He's not going to come. You Christians have a false hope. God says because there was a flood, you can count for sure. Judgment is going to come again. It came in Noah's day. The people scoffed and laughed. The judgment is coming in some future day. We scoff and laugh. But for those of us that know Christ, it's a blessed and glorious hope. Many of you have thought a long time about religion and Christianity. Are you committed to Jesus Christ? Jesus said you must be born again. Start with your hearts. Be born from above. You can be changed. The world could be changed. The country can be changed. Now Nicodemus must have been stunned when Jesus said that to him. One of the great religious leaders of his time, Nicodemus it says was a ruler. That meant that he was rich. He was religious and yet he was searching for reality. How many of you go to church? But you're still searching. There's still an empty place in your heart. And something tells you inside that you're not really right with God. You see, Nicodemus fasted two days a week. Do you know anybody in your church that does that? He spent two hours every day in prayer. How many people do you know that spend two hours every day in prayer? He tithed all his income. Not many people even do that these days. He was a professor at the theological school of theology, worked hard at religion. But Jesus said, Nicodemus, that's not enough. You must be born again. Repentance means that you change your mind about God, about yourself, and about your need. You change your mind and Christ will transform it. We've all sinned. And that's the reason he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. You say, well, what do I have to do? You have to be willing to repent of your sins. That means to change your mind, to change your heart, to change your attitude. That means that you say, Lord, I have sinned. I'm sorry. It means that you're saying to God, I'm willing to change my way of living and turn from sin. That's repentance. Change your mind. He'll change your heart. Change your mind and he will come in and regenerate you and you will be a born again person. Today is the day of salvation. Come now while you can. Don't wait. There is no other way. Man cannot be saved by bread alone. Man cannot be saved by earning his way, by working his way. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There is only one way that men can get to heaven, one road. Jesus said it was a narrow road. He said the gate was narrow. And it's the cross, and I must come to his cross. That's the reason that one-third of Matthew, one-third of Mark, that's the reason that one-half of John is given over to the death of Jesus Christ in Hayes' Life of Lincoln. There are 5,000 pages and Lincoln was dramatically assassinated, but there are only 25 pages given to his death. Yet in the biographies of Jesus Christ, from a third to a half are given to his death. Why? Because it's the only way to heaven.